Once again, it's a blessing and a privilege for us to gather together in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are grateful to God once again always for the blessing that he allows us uh, to be able to wake up this morning, uh, have a portion of our health and our strength, and just being able again to see one another, to be able to talk with one another, to just be able to experience life from the perspective of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we clearly know that we are dealing with a different time, but at the same time, our God is good, yeah. and he yeah. is always yeah. worthy of all glory, all honor, and praise. The word of God says to us in Psalm 98, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Mm. Yeah. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation yeah, yeah. of our God. Shout joyfully yeah. to the Lord. All the earth break forth in song. Rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp with the harp and the sound of the song, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Yeah. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the world and those who dwell in it, let the rivers clap their hands. All right. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness. He shall judge the world and the people with equity. Yeah. This is the word of God. Yeah. Our God, we know you are marvelous. Yes. And you have done some marvelous things. You have done things that have been beyond our imagination. Oh, you have God. done things that oh, have God. caused us to be in awe. We've been shocked. We've been surprised. We have literally been enthused by the fact oh, that we see how great and awesome you truly yeah. are. And so, God, we are here today. We are where we are today to give you thanks and praise and glory yes, and yes, honor. God, yes. we know when it comes to praise at the end of the day, the only one that deserves a hand clap, the only one that deserves applause, the only one that deserves oh, praise is you, O oh God. So now, Lord, we know that you are the audience of one. So we ask, yeah, yeah. Lord, that you would help us to give you the honor that you deserve. Please, Lord. Help us to give you the praise that you deserve, Lord, and to give you everything we got today because we don't have no promise of tomorrow. Oh, Lord. So we thank you, God, for allowing us to come together once again. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability to be thank able you. to dress thank ourselves this thank morning you. and and get ourselves ready for worship and for praise. God, we ask again that you would look in on us because we know again you are worthy of every hand yes, clap. Yes. You are worthy of every foot pat. You are worthy of every hand wave. Oh, you are God. worthy of every amen. So right here and right now, Lord, without hesitation, without debate, without delay, we're going to give you the honor, yeah. the glory, yeah. and the praise that is yours and yeah, yours yeah, alone. Yeah, 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 whether yeah. we're in the house, whether we're in the car, whether we're in the building where the people of God may meet, God, it really doesn't matter because we know you deserve yeah. all the glory. Yeah. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all of the praise. So help us to think about you, to think about how you're worthy, to think about how you are deserving, to think about the fact it's you that woke us up this morning. It's you that is allowing us our health, yeah. our strength. It's you, Lord, that, that let us sleep last night. It's you yeah. that protected us all night long. And since yeah. we gathered here 168 hours ago, there are some persons that are no longer with us on planet Earth. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. But the fact, Lord, you've given us another chance. Thank you, Jesus. We're not going to take it for granted. Oh, we're not going to act like we're supposed to be here. But we're going to give you all the honor that you deserve right here, right now. Yeah. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's yeah. praise him. Okay. 
king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Glory, for he is the king of kings. Give him glory, for he is the king of kings. Give him glory, for he is the king of kings. Give him glory, for he is the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Give him glory, for he is the king of kings. Give him glory, for he is the king of kings. Give him glory, for he is the king of kings. Give him glory, for he is the king of kings. Praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Sing your praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Give him glory, for he's the king of kings. Give him glory, for he's the king of kings. Give him glory, for he's the king of kings. Give him glory, for he's the king of kings. All hail King Jesus. All hail Emmanuel.
going to ask all the children, of all the children to come up to the screen. Come on, children. I see you. I see you. <laughs> all right. Yes, Jesus loves me. You know why? The Bible yeah, yeah, yeah. tells me yeah, so. Yeah. one more time Jesus loves us this we know for the Bible yeah. tells us so yeah. shall, shall we stand together as we go to God in prayer uh, there are there's a lot to pray for there's a lot to talk to God about as it relates to the issue of COVID-19 as it relates to the issue of relationships, period, with people. And of course, we know that in the state of Texas right now, we have our loved ones that are being bombarded right. with the hurricanes, the tropical storms, added to everything else that's going on. So it becomes evident to us that there is somebody that we got to call on that's much greater than we are. Yeah. There is someone that we can rely on that has so much more power than we actually have. And that is God our Father. So yeah. if you would bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Father, how we stretch our hands to you. Yeah. But there is no other help we know. Oh God. If you would draw yourself from us, yes, we, we really, we really truly don't know where to go. God, we know. We know you made the promise that you would never leave us, oh, Lord. nor would you ever forsake us. And we count on that promise. We rely on that promise. We trust yes, your yes. word. And so here we are this day, Lord. It's the, the 19th time, the 19th Sunday oh, that we have had to gather as we have had to gather different times than what we have all of the years of our lives, all of the oh history, God. Oh God. all of the months, all of the days, all of the hours that we've lived. These 19 Sundays have been different than any time in our lives. But Lord, what we do know, you have not changed. Ha. Oh, 
we know you've not changed. Our world oh, has changed to some degree. Our, our going out and our coming in has changed. Our ability to touch yeah. one another has changed. Oh, Lord. Our, our face masks have changed. Sickness and illness has caused change. But Lord, the one thing we do know is that you have not changed. Yeah. And because you remain the same yesterday, today, and forever, we count on the fact that all that we need, all that we desire for life, you are able to supply it. And we thank you so much for that awesome and great reality. So, Father, we remember those of our family members that are sick and ill, those who are going through seasons of yeah. difficulty, sickness, and disease. Velma Taylor, Nina Colston, Barbara Toombs. Deborah's daughter-in-law, Elma Tatum, Sherman, Nita Gale, Renee and Allen, G Lee Offrey and Mai and Christian Sorrell. We remember those, Lord, that are going through seasons of bereavement and death. The family of Billy Mason, Calvin Burleson, Willie Wright, Lincoln Williams, Juanita Logan. God, you know each and every person. You know their situation. You know their circumstance. You know their heartache. You know their pain. Yeah. And God, you know you're the only one that can give them comfort while they're going through what they're going through. So, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, as you do what you do all the time, that you would heal, that you would deliver as you see fit, that you would make a way not only for just us, but make the way as you see the way need to be made for everybody. Lord, there are unbelievers that need you to make a way. <laughs> there are believers that need you to make a way. We're glad, Lord, you declared in your word that your sun rises and sets on the just as well as the unjust. You cause it to rain on the just as well as the unjust. So, Lord, it gives us evidence that we all need you, Father. For those persons that are dealing with COVID-19, for those persons that are dealing with the hurricane down south of Texas, for people that are dealing with issues all over the world, God, we come in and we commit ourselves to you because we have no other help. Yes, Lord. We got nobody else to turn to. We got nobody else we can count on. We got nobody else that got the power you have. And so, God, we entrust our lives to you and ask again that you would just always help us to be thinking like your son, Jesus Christ. Yes. To the end that the things that we say, the things that we do, just as he did, it brings glory and praise and honor to you. For every member of the Good Shepherd Church, yes, for the baby and tease Betty, all the way to Sister Phil, God, thank you, thank you Lord. for blessing us as a church family. Keep us, lead us, guide us, direct us, and protect us, and we'll be careful at every juncture of our lives to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory yes, Lord. that doesn't belong to anybody else but you and you alone. For we pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who is the very Christ of God. It is in his name we say thank you. Thank you Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today... Um, as you know, we are studying the book of Romans right now, and today we would be looking at Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 9 uh, as a, a means of uh, our study for today. But the Lord is leading me to just share a word with us. This is very topical in terms of uh, our approach to the text various passages that we're looking at. So if you got pen and paper ready, I would encourage you to be writing those passages down as we, uh, as we go through it. 
But we just want to tag this, this particular talk today, eternal life, eternal life, or we just say eternal life talk, if you want to put it that way. And the reason being is because the hope of eternal life, the hope of eternal life must be the motive for living holy in our earthly lives. I'm going to say that again. The hope of eternal life must be the motive for living holy in our earthly lives. The reason, reason uh, I believe the Lord is leading me to talk about eternal life is because we are living in a time and we are dealing with a time whereby eternal life is closer for some than it is for others. We're living in a time whereby death is, is as uh, David would say, uh, we're only a step away. We're living, we're living in a time whereby we, we see um, a, lot of, a lot of sickness and illness and disease and, and reminded, each of us are reminded of our own mortality. Each of us are reminded of the fact that we are not here to stay. Each of us are reminded of the fact that life is brief. And, and it must be cherished, it must be, it must be held on to, it must, it must be appreciated uh, because of its brevity. But more than anything else, it's appreciated because of the promises that God has made to us in his world, in this word, as it relates to those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, that no matter what life may bring our way, God has given us the promise I'm going to just say it this way, that he got us. I, I just like to say that. I, I just like to believe, Kennedy, that God says to you and I, I, I got you. And I got you to the point that regardless to what takes place in this life, I am giving you the promise of eternal life. And as a result of the promise of eternal life, God, I'm making the decision to live holy on this earthly life as I anticipate my eternal life. We know that. We know that because uh, these recent months have, uh, I've had some conversations with people personally and uh, since the pandemic and things that have not have anything to do with the pandemic, whether it's COVID-19, uh, the, corona, the coronavirus and the like. But there's been a lot of conversations about eternal life. And those conversations have been with people like Pastor Darrell Broussard and uh, Aunt Pat, my Uncle Percy's uh, uh, wife, but Jules and brother and sister Edward. There have been conversations with Yancine and Barbara, Dana and Greta, Hope, Sharon. There's been conversations with Pastor Barry and Brussela, Pastor Allen. Uh, even last week, conversations with Velma and Thelma, Pastor Lewis and Drell. Uh, Tamika and Mary more recently and it's been about eternal life but understanding that it's been the issue of the separation of life on this side moving closer to eternal life on the other side and many of those conversations have been conversations designed for encouragement has been designed for enrichment those conversations have actually taken place through tears. Those conversations have happened through uh, 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 frustrations. Those conversations have even been through spouts of anger, uh, sometimes a sense of not fully apprehending, not fully comprehending, but reaching for answers, looking for something that can make sense when we're dealing with the issue of separation that leads to eternal life. And so therefore, I just wanted to encourage us to, to remember that there are things that God reminds us in his word that says to you and I that eternal life is promised to us. But what we do on this side has a great bearing that demonstrates whether or not we appreciate what God has for us on the other side based upon how we live on this side. 
One of the things that God is saying to you and I, he reminds us, is that we got to believe the gospel, folk. We've got, we've got to believe the gospel. In order, in order for us to experience eternal life as God has designed for us to experience it, we've got to believe the gospel. John chapter 3, again, if you want to turn there in your Bibles. In John chapter 3, we have the wonderful uh, uh, story, the narrative of Jesus Christ with Nicodemus. The Bible says that Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and he makes the declaration, Father, man, we know, he says to Jesus, we know that you are a teacher who comes from God for no one can do the signs, verse 2, that you do unless God is with him. And in the midst of that conversation with Nicodemus, we have the verses that Jesus reminds us of eternal life. When you look at verse uh, 14, he says, and as Moses was lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so even must the son of man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have, listen to the word, folk, eternal life, everlasting life. Why? John 3, 16, possibly the most popular verse of the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so if eternal life means something to you and I, it must be on the basis of the fact that we believe the gospel. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe what God has given to us concerning his son. And we live out our lives in the appreciation that he says to us that we will not perish, but we will have not only will we have, but even he declares it to us now that as a result of having Jesus Christ in 1 John chapter 5, he reminds us around verse 12 and 13 that he who has the Son of God has eternal life, but he who does not have the Son of God does not have eternal life. I got to ask you today, are you glad that you got eternal life? And you have it, why? Because you have the Son so we have to believe, we have to believe the gospel. Paul reminds us of that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 15. If you would briefly turn there, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, as he, as he preaches to, writes to the church at Corinth, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which you also receive and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. Notice now the elements of the gospel. He says, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. What happened? Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen by Cephas and by 12 and after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain to the present but notice some have fallen asleep they they've died they've been separated from this side of life closer now to eternal life but they have an assurance they have a security they have they have the uh, the uh, the appreciation the apprehension they have the understanding that even though they are separated from this life they're going to eternal life <laughs> folk 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 we're living in a day and time we're living in a day and time where the reality of death is more pronounced to us than it has ever been. We're living in a day and time where we're seeing it every day. It will get in the reminder of it every day. And if we're not careful, we will literally become fearful. If we're not careful, we will literally become afraid because there is this fear of, of, of dying. There's this fear of being separated. But when you trust and believe the gospel, when you believe the message concerning the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He reminds us at the end of this chapter. Remember in verse chapter, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look at verse 55. He says, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of sin is death. The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law, but notice, but thanks be to God who gives us what? The victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So since we already know we have victory, since we already know we have the promise of eternal life, what are we to do? He reminds us in verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He's promising you that when you believe the gospel, you got a big payday coming. <laughs> you got a big, a big payday coming, but it requires, again, believing the gospel. If I'm talking to someone today who hasn't trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you're living in a world where you're seeing, again, death in a way that you've never experienced before. I would imagine in your earthly life, I can't imagine a time that me, at any of us who are living right now have seen what we have seen and the reality that it is all around us, but there is a remedy for it, and that is what to believe the gospel, trust in the fact that God sent his son. And his son gave his life. And he says that if we can believe that, we live with what the promise of eternal life. Not only do we have the issue of eternal life, uh, that we got to believe the gospel. Here's the second thing. We got to bear in mind the brevity of earthly life. Bear in mind the brevity of earthly life. God, God never promised any of us that we would live to be 100. God never promised any of us that we would be 60. God never promised. He never told us 50. He never told us 40. Never told us 30. Never told us 20. Never told us we were going to make it through our teens. Never told us we would make it through infancy and toddlerhood and, and being a young child. He never promised any of that. But what he does say to us is that we understand that life is brief. Uh, he reminds us of that, if you would, turn to the book of James chapter 4, just briefly, James chapter 4, just one verse of James chapter 4, as James is talking about faith and encouraging people to live by faith and to live what depending on God, don't ever say what you're going to do tomorrow unless you believe that the will of God can be done in your life. He would say to them at verse 14, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? Is it even a vapor? Have you ever paid attention to a vapor? You know, whether or not it's in the, in the wintertime, in the cold, you see that vapor. It blows out your mouth and then all of a sudden it vanishes away. There are times you may strike a match and you see the vapor and then all of a sudden it vanishes away. He is saying that life in and of itself is very brief. And it reminds us of that in that verse. He says, what, what your life, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. Notice what he says to us. Instead, you ought to say if the Lord wills. We shall live and do this or that. There is a brevity to life that is attached to eternal life. So what God says to us, since we don't have a promise of long life on this earth, what we ought to do is to live that life to its fullest because we're always living with the hope of what? Eternal life. God has not made the promise to any of us that we would live to see our, our great-grandchildren and grandchildren and all of that sort of thing. He never told us that, but he does say to us that I have the promise of eternal life, but that eternal life is determined also by how I live my life in holiness while I'm on planet Earth. He reminds us of this again, 2 second, second, second Corinthians chapter 5. If you would turn there with me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he, he reminds us, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, watch this, eternal in the heavens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can, any, can anybody agree with me that, that's looking right now to say things you used to do 20 years ago, you can't do it the same way no more? Anybody, anybody agree with the fact that things you used to do 30 years ago, you just can't do it the same way? Things you used to do 50 years ago, you just can't do Come on, help me here. You know why? Because this body, as soon as we're born, is already on the decline. 
Yeah, we're going to be we're going to be dedicating uh, case real soon. And the reality is that even as he grows, he's never going to get younger than what he is. He's already he's already getting old. Don't we say he's he's one year old? <laughs> we don't say one year young because it reminds us that we're all moving toward something else we're all moving toward the fact that this earth is not here to stay and God says to you and I I've got something better prepared for you but in the meantime live like you love me in the meantime serve like I'm worthy sing praises to me because you know that I'm worthy of worship and honor and glory and praise why because life is very brief yeah, we've got to bear, bear that in mind. And then he, he reminds us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Most of us, we know that verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we normally uh, hear it at funerals and the like. But I just want to remind those who are going to your, through your seasons right now, through your tears right now, through your pain right now, there are many of you that are still reliving things that happened early in the year of loved ones that are gone. But remember what God says in verse, verse 13 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died, rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the clouds and to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, what? Comfort one another with these words. I don't know who's listening to me right now. Some of you are, are breathing over a loved one that is gone. And I'm not going to tell you not to cry. But I will say this. Don't cry as somebody that has no hope. The hope of resurrection says to you that God has made the promise that he's going to give you a word of comfort. And the word of comfort is this, that they are asleep. They are asleep. That's what you have when you have eternal life. It's not what only what you have that's coming up, but you have that reality right now. We know that this earthly house is going gonna, is gonna to fade. We know, but he gives us the promise that even those loved ones that are gone, God gives us a comforting word to know that he's going to raise them up one day. He's going to raise them up one day. I, I think, about, think about one of the great preachers of our city, uh, Pastor Arthur Ray, Arthur Ray Young, who just passed away a few days ago when he died. He was a double amputee, but he never stopped trusting God. He kept preaching the word of God. But here's the reality. When he is seen again, when we see Jesus with him again, that limitation that he had on this side of no legs, that, that's going to be taken care of. Because why? He lived with the promise of eternal life. Oh, yeah. Are we crying right now? Absolutely. Are we sad right now? Are we hurt right now? Yes, we are. But we have the promise of eternal life. Why, and why, why would you tell somebody that just a lost, lost a loved one not to cry? That's one of the most ridiculous things I ever heard of in my life. Please don't cry. Don't cry. You know what I've learned? Most folk who tell me not to cry, the reason they didn't want me to cry is because when I was crying, if I cried too long, it was going to start making them cry. So they wanted me to stop crying so they didn't have to cry. Can I get a witness in here? Sometimes we don't know what to say to people when it happens. But one of the things that I've learned, a simple thing you can say to a person that's going through, say, how, how can I help? What, 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 what can I do to help? Because the reality is that we do cry. We are sad. But we are sad with a sense of hope. It's not helplessness. It's not, it's not that we fall apart. It's not that we feel like we're not going to make it again because we got the hope of Jesus Christ. 
And the good thing is, is that those loved ones that we're crying over, they believe the same thing. And they would tell us that same thing. They would encourage us to say the same thing because they're reminded again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm absent from the body, but right now I'm present with the Lord. I'm doing fine. I'm doing well. I'm doing swell. I know you're going to cry. I know you're going to miss me, but I'm all right because I have the promise of eternal life. And here's the final thing. Again, we say you got to believe the gospel. You got to bear in mind the brevity of, et- of, of earthly life. And the reason, again, that we have the sorrow and stuff that we deal with. You remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before I move on. In Isaiah 53, verse 3, you don't have to turn there. It says that he was a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. As long as we're going to live on planet earth, y'all. We will cry. As long as we live on planet earth, we're all going to have our moments of sorrow. As long as we live on planet earth, we're still going to do funerals. As long as we live on on planet earth, we still got to go by the graveside. As long as we live on planet earth. But we we got an encouraging word. Believe the gospel. Bear in mind the brevity of earthly life. And then here's the final thing. Be making, be making business decisions for beyond the grave. Be making, be making business decisions for beyond the grave. Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter two, and we're closing very shortly. Second Timothy chapter, uh, chapter two, chapter four, matter of fact. Second Timothy chapter four. Paul gives us an encouragement, and we love to, we love to talk about this particular verse. Uh, it's it again. Remind us at verse six. He says, "For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand." I have fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. Finally, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me only, but only for those, also for those who have loved his appearing. I'm all, Paul say, I'm ready. I'm getting, I'm getting, I've made the necessary preparations. And the greatest preparation you can make is whether or not you put your trust, your faith, your confidence in Jesus Christ. That's the greatest preparation you can make. But you got to understand, when we also depart from this life, there are some loved ones that we leave behind. So God is saying to us, we also need to make preparations. We got to be making some business decisions for beyond the grave. And so, and so I'm, asking, I'm asking you today as I, as I get ready to close this message, I'm asking you today, um, I've, I hope, the hope is I've already had the talk. I know a lot of y'all struggle, y'all struggle with the talk, y'all some, some folk done already turn off the television. Some folk done already turn off Facebook. Say, man, I don't want to hear that. But listen, you might as well hear it. You might as well hear it because it's a reality for every last one of us. All of us go through that experience one way or the other. But the question is, what, are, what preparations are we making right now? If I could say it this way, have you, have you talked about your funeral arrangements? Have you talked about what you would want to happen in the event that you are closer what, to eternal life, that you're no longer living on this side, you're headed to the other side. Is there somebody that you're having that conversation with? I'm going to tell you now, if you're a believer, you don't have to be afraid. Don't be scared because God has taken care of that matter. God has handled that matter through his son, Jesus Christ. Why? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have what? everlasting life he's taken care of the matter so don't be don't be afraid to have the conversation because so many times when when people when people when people depart from this life when people die families start to scramble families uh, uh, get nervous why because they don't know what the desires are they don't know sometimes where the papers are they, they don't know they don't know where the insurance policies are they don't they don't they don't know where the numbers are they don't know where a phone number is they don't know who to contact next they don't know who the mortuary is they don't know what funeral home to call but if you talk about it now yeah you remember our lord said it that way he say he say he say they going they going to arrest me <laughs> they going they going to beat me they they going to crucify me but on the third day I'm going to I'm going to get up he was making preparation because he knew that that time had to come so I'm saying to you I don't know who you are I'm saying it to you I'm saying it to you especially those of us who those of you who are the heads of your homes make those preparations I know that's some some folk you don't trust but there's got to be some somebody in the world that you trust 
with your final affairs, somebody in the world that you can rely on to be able to do right by the money that you're leaving behind or by the policies that you're leaving behind, the land you're leaving behind, the house you're leaving behind. That's somebody you can trust. And I would say to those of us who are husbands and wives, those of us who travel together and the like, there ought to be somebody other than the husband and wife that know what's going on. Some, some, some child, some nephew, some, some, some relative, some friend, somebody you trust that can handle and manage those issues. Why? Because it's a part of what? Eternal life. God has made us the promise of eternal life. And because we have that promise of eternal life, it's for motivation for how we live out holiness on this earthly life. You got to tell somebody. You got to let people know where the stuff is. You got to let them know it's over here. It's over there. If this happens to me, go here, go there. Have a place where everything can be together. Why? Because you're making preparation. It is a reality, folk. Let's not put our heads in the sand. Let's not act as though it may not happen to us. We live with the anticipation that one day, one day, one day. I know it's a sober message, and for some of you, it's a, it's a morbid message, but I'm trying to help us to understand preparation needs to be done. God has given you the ability to prepare your soul, and all you got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. God has, has said you got to believe the gospel. God has, has put it in your mind that life is brief, and you're not promised to be here. But in the midst of it all, God is also saying you got to, you got to make some business decisions. <laughs> you got you to gotta make some plans. You got to determine what you will bequeath to others. You know that fancy word. It means, again, to, to give or to leave someone by legal, something by legal will. It means, again, to hand down. It means to teach the next generation. You got to prepare others for ultimately what we know is going to happen. But here is the good news. God has made us the promise. He has made us the promise that there's going to be a time. There's going to be no more sickness, no more disease, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more dying. That's where we're headed toward. But in the meantime, we've got to live our lives in a way that we demonstrate appreciation for the fact that God has given us the promise of eternal life. Yeah, the church would say, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, because we know what he has in store for us. And, but here is what I want to say to us. We don't want to be so heavenly minded that we ain't no earthly good. We want to be so heavenly minded that it motivates us to do earthly good. <laughs> because we recognize it cost God his son on the cross who died on a Friday evening, was buried in a grave, and got up early Sunday morning. With all power and all authority. And because of that, the Bible says because he lives, we have the promise of eternal life. Father, how we love you, how we thank you for knowing that it is well with our souls. Oh, we got tears, we got pain, we got sorrow because we hear the bad news, we hear the difficult news we hear sometimes what we say is even unbelievable news of loved ones who are no longer here with us. But God, we thank you that you remind us in your word. You made the promise. That's why you gave us your son, because you decided that would be a change. You determined that you wanted us to live forever. And we thank you, God, for filling that determination through your only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So help us now as we look, as we anticipate, as we uh, exercise our faith in the hope of eternal life that we will live holy in our earthly life because that's you, what you've called for us to do. We give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Perhaps today that's someone who hasn't trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Today is a good day. Right now is a good time to trust him, uh, to let him know you appreciate who he is and all that he has done. You recognize even in this message that God loves you. 
The word says he so loved the world that he gave his only son. What does he want you to believe? And I know that's what you're saying, man. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? You need to believe that he did give his son. You need to believe that his son did give his life. What, what, what an unfair exchange, folk. Because we are the ones who messed up. We're the ones who sinned. We're the ones who rebelled against God. But God gave his sinless son. God gave his son who never rebelled against him. God gave his son who always did his will and he allowed that son to die in our place. Oh, we give him the glory. We give him the praise. And so today, if you haven't trusted him, that's the one we're calling for you to trust today. That's the one we're calling for you to believe in today. That's the one we're calling for you to put your confidence in today. 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 Hopefully you're with somebody who can share what has been shared with you to expand on it, maybe to ask some answers, some questions that you may have concerning eternal life that can only be found through Jesus Christ, forgiveness that can only be found through Jesus Christ, no longer being dominated by sin. You can only find that through Jesus Christ. And maybe that person can answer your question. If not, you can always call our church office at 713 672 9847 713-672-9847 and we'll be delighted to call you back and to have dialogue concerning what we believe the Lord has done in your life in that he has given you eternal life. Father, how we love you again and thank you so much for the reality of saving souls even by virtual digital video. We know you got that kind of power because your word is just that strong. For those of us, again, that are hearing, thank you. For those of us that are seeing, thank you. For those of us that are saved, we say thank you. But we pray for those that have not yet trusted in your son as their savior, that before this day ends, they will hear the gospel that will draw them to you so that they too might experience eternal life and to live a life of holiness in their earthly life. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Amen. While, while you're yet uh, preparing, it's offering time. It's offering time. Uh, those of you that know what you have been doing, the Bible says what that God loves a cheerful giver and God has been supplying and God has been making sure that uh, all of our needs, that ability to give whenever we needed to give, he's given us that ability to do so. Why? Because we have trusted him with the resources. If we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. But if we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. So, Father, thank you now for the giver and for the gift we thank you that those resources that you supply are being used for the ongoing of your kingdom, for the sharing of the gospel, and for service to the church and to mankind. It's in Jesus' name we say thank you. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I want to do this while we're uh, getting ready. I know uh, Kaysen is here, and we, we know we have our... Uh, we're going to have our uh, birthday greetings that we want to acknowledge. Um, so would you give me a power clap for those persons that have their birthdays going on this week? Keelan Daniels, Samantha McCoy, Sonia Evans, Kaylin Jason, Rose Johnson, Belinda Felder, and Tyrone Williams. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. To each and every one of you, my prayer is that God will immensely bless you uh, in this particular week. Uh, and hopefully y'all remember, you only have one birthday. Um, I'm trying to get some of the members to understand that uh, you don't celebrate a birthday the whole month. It's a birthday, you know, so just remember your birth, your birthday. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, Selena, would you all come forth um, as we get ready now by way of streaming lives? Uh, it's going to be virtual that we're going to be dedicating uh, our little brother Kason 
uh, to the Lord on today. So would you just, just we're going to just reset. Don't, don't, don't hang up, folk. Don't hang up. We're going to just reset for just a moment, and then we're going to come right back. You can hear our voice. You can hear our voice. What's up, dude? All right. Look at that man. Look at that man. All right. Y'all perfectly set. I mean, if you wouldn't do the dance, you come on this side. Thank you. Hey, perfectly set. Love it. Like y'all knew where y'all supposed to be. I didn't even have to put no paper on the floor. Thank y'all so much. Your name, sir? Carl. Carl. Good to meet you, Carl. Good to meet you. What's up, Kason? How you doing, buddy? You trying to figure out who in the world is behind that thing, huh? Amen. Listen, we are here today uh, as a result of the command. The Bible, we call this an order of dedicatory service. Uh, the command to the parents. Um, let us hear the word of the Lord as it comes to us in Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7. It's in these the words that I command thee this day. You shall be in your, in your heart. You shall teach them diligently unto your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in the house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. This is the command of God, that we should diligently raise our children in our most holy faith. In obedience to this command, these parents, these godparents bring their child today to present him uh, to the Lord. And so uh, those of you that are present, the father, the mother, um, if you, if it be your intention today to present this child to the Lord, I'm going to ask a series of questions and you would simply respond by saying, I do or we do, all right? Kason, is it Joel or Joel? Joel Newton. Y'all know, know what that name means? Y'all know what that name I love that name. Yahweh is God. I love that boy. I tell you, I love that. That's what that name means. Um, Case and Joel Newton, you're here today to present him to the Lord and to pledge yourself to bring him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Please answer we do to the following promises. Do you hear this day? Recognize your child as the gift of God and give heartfelt thanks for God's blessing. Do you hear this day dedicate your child to the Lord who gave him to you? Do you hear this day pledge as parents, as God parents, that you will bring him up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? Do you hear this day promise to give your child every possible benefit of home, of education, and of the church? All right. Do you hear this day ask God's blessing upon his life to guide, to guard, and to direct your child through all of his, all of his, uh, all of his years? Amen. Let's bow. Father, we thank you once again for the blessing of life. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness toward us. We thank you, God, for demonstrating that you chose to give Kason to Carl and Selena for the purpose of bringing him into the world that he might come to know Christ as his personal Savior. God, I pray for these parents. I pray that they are taking your word serious in terms of the nurture of this child, the rearing of this child, the bringing up of this child, and to recognize that he is a gift that is to be given back to you, Father. I pray again for his, his growth. I pray for his sustenance. I pray, God, that uh, you would keep him strong and you would um, allow him to be intelligent and and to be able to think and, and just to be a child, Lord, to enjoy life and, and to learn as you would have him to learn. So I pray your protection. 
uh, that can be only provided by Carl and Selena. I pray, God, that you would just allow that to be an awesome reality in their lives. And then, Lord, to the end, that everything that they say, everything that they do, they're not going to brag about what they did. They're not going to brag about what they have. They're not going to brag about what they can do. But they're going to give you the credit to know that any ability they have is because you gave it. Any resources that they can supply for Cason is because you give it. Help them to work together. Help them to love each other and to love him. That the things that are said and done are for his betterment. We commend him to you. We commit him to you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. And all who agreed said, amen. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you little man, Kason Joel Newton. Come on, give him a hand. Give the parents a hand too also. Amen. You all may return to your seats. You may return to your seats. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Our uh, Sunday school is getting ready to start. Uh, I do need to say this again as pastor and one of the elders of the Good Shepherd Church. We still got to do church, y'all. <laughs> we, we are still expected to study the word. We're still expected to edify and encourage one another. Uh, right now, it's not the most... It's not the way we would like it, but we thank God for the way that it is. And so what we want to do is use the resources that God has given us to the best of our ability. Uh, Sister Marcia Skin is going to be on with our women. You have the line that you can call. Women, you've been calling that line for several weeks now. Continue to do that. Uh, I am going to be on the line with our brothers on this particular Sunday again. So I'm going to ask our brothers to call in. And uh, we're going to say, we're going to start at 1015. It's right at 1005. At 1015, we're going to start our Sunday school for today. Please, brothers and sisters, uh, keep in mind, as I always say, God is still watching us. God is still observing us. And we don't want to be nonchalant. We don't want to be complacent. We don't, we don't want to have an indifferent attitude. Uh, because, listen, if we do anything else, we're saying to God, we do not appreciate what you did by allowing us not to be able to go to that building like we've been going. No, no, no. Even if we can't, we want to learn to say thank you. And we want to live our lives in such a way that we're telling God thank you for all the things that he has done. Don't forget, uh, we'll continue praying for the, uh, the family of, of Calvin Burleson, who is uh, the, the brother of Lois, uh, Lois, Lois Anderson, and also Mary, uh, Mary Wiltz, uh, Tamika, all of them, their uncle. And so the services for, uh, for Calvin, if y'all will allow me just a moment, just a moment, please. Allow me just a moment. Are going to be this coming uh, on the 1st, uh, August the 1st. Everything is going to be this coming Saturday, August the 1st, at Forest Lawn Missionary Baptist Church at 5012 Weaver Road. That's in Houston, Texas. That's Pastor Ricky Bell. Uh, that's going to be a walkthrough viewing from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And the funeral is going to be for family only, for family only at 11 a.m. So let's keep that in mind while we are praying for their family. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. Father, how we thank you, how we bless you, how we honor you and praise you for allowing us the chance to gather together in your name one more time. We pray, God, that as we move forward in this day, you will be pleased with our service of worship as we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise that's only yours and yours alone. But we thank you for allowing us to know that we have the hope of eternal life, but you expect us to live holy on this earthly, in our earthly life as we move forward. For that, we say thank you. For the band, we thank you. Uh, for the presence of our visitors, we say thank you. For our men that sung today, we say thank you. We thank you for Zach and his presentation. Thank you again for Michael and his service on today. Thank you again for the presence of uh, Leroy and, and Sandra with us, for Kennedy with us today. We give you honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen.